we need to give it up one more time for uh, Shifu Bilal. Yeah. I'm not sure whether y'all really listening to the brother. Yes, we were. Okay, good. Yes. Right. Because if you was paying attention to him, you'd be able to keep up. If not, we're going to lose you. We're going to lose you. Um, first, I'd like to thank everybody for taking their time to come out uh, this evening to Black and Nobel. Um, this is one of our institutions in our community that we need to continue to support. Uh, the, the history of, of black bookstores uh, is a long history within itself, where a lot of people who we look at uh, who are famous started in places like this, and uh, this represents an institution of education. As you can see, there's a lot of literature and reading and, and visual information, even things for the children back there that you might uh, need in your home to bring in. And we need not only to support this entity, but uh, offer advice, methods to franchise it so that they, this type of entity can exist everywhere where it's needed at. It's needed everywhere. We need a lot of education. For those of you who don't know me, my name is uh, Brother Ali, and I, like uh, Brother Bilal, am, am a minister within the Aboriginal Republic of North America and the International Vision Society. And we're here for a general education class on self-government and wealth building. Most likely, you are not going to pass your job down to your child. <laughs> Most likely. Unless you just got a good boss who wants to keep hiring y'all. That could happen. Most likely, if you are on public assistance, you're not going to pass it down to your child. Most Unless they sign up too. Right. Right you pass on a mentality. But there are things that you can pass down generationally. But the only people who think about passing something down generationally are people who are mentally alive. Someone who is mentally dead is only worrying about the moment only. And we need to do, we do need to worry about the moment. Because when you leave here, you got responsibilities that you have to take care of. But if you can get into a mindset that was highlighted that you are the supreme determiner of your own destiny, which we use words like God for, and with that power of determination, you're going to use that power to build with people who have the same value system as you because you love yourself enough and you love your family enough to do so. And to not just do so in the moment, but to do so thinking about seven generations down from you. If you are not thinking that, then you're already cursing the generation that's seven generations down. It's a self-imposed curse. So for people who have lost the science of wealth building, we have to get in the room and actually talk about it. We have to talk about it, then we have to experiment with it, assess our experimentation, then come back to the table. We have to know what is wasting your time and what is using your time properly. And we only learn that through experience. Some of us have some wealth, some, a lot of us don't. And when we look at our condition, we want to change it as a group, which means we have to change it as individuals. And if we're going to do that, we need some formulas. We need some sharing of information. We need to exchange some things that are going to build us up. And we need to stop being haters. We hate on everybody. We even hate on white folks. We hate on white folks so bad that we call them the devil for implementing their success. Think about that. Now, I'm not saying that they're not devils. <laughs> What I am saying is that in it, not all of them, but the ones who are who are running the plantation, who are running their husbandry, they're successful. They they implemented it real good. They got almost 300 million people in agreement with a system, and they what they do is they'll even participate in it, right? To mask that they're not different than you. The richest people in the world got birth certificates too. Right? Yeah. Warren Buffett got a birth certificate. 
But it's cool because he knows something that you don't know about the document. He understands that every state has a, has a board of directors. He understands that the United States House of Representatives, they got a board of directors. And then they know where to invest their self in to get investment back to themselves. So this is a chess game, and you on a chess board, and you have to learn how to play. So what we think, this is why I, 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 I prefaced about the, the issue of government. What you think is government, all right? It may be government in the sense of, 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 of generally governing people, but it's not what you think it is. I want to demystify you from what you think is white supremacy and make it real clear to you what it actually is. Because when you say, most of us, when we say white supremacy, we complain. That's what we, we complain about white supremacy, which means we don't have a remedy. It's a complaint. You, that means that you want white people to do better the ones that's causing the problem. But they're not going to do better. <laughs> they're not. They're not going to change it. And they set up something that um, they learn from us. All right? They learn the science of wealth building and family from you. Well, now, they, when they came to this country, they came as what? Chartered corporations. Right? And they lived in little small villages. Some of them lived in the side of, 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 of uh, the Delaware in little caves. They couldn't come up on the land yet because they had no power. It's true. They dug out little caves that you could still go down and see all the way down to Delaware, and they lived in those caves. And some of them would come and come ask the original people on the land, you know, can y'all give me some food? And, you know what I mean? Then they start trading, right? But they had an agenda. They had a plan. They came friendly. They ain't come taking over everything like they tell you the story now. They were starving. They had to go through a lot to get, I'm trying to lay a point, I'm not trying to make fun of them. They had to go through a lot to get where they are today. They had to fight wars. They was willing, based on their personal objectives, to kill other people to get to their particular goal. And they were the minority and the weak party. So they had to lose a lot of battles. There's a battle called the Battle of Yamasee. You ever heard of it, 1712? Yamasee, the Battle of Yamasee? Never heard of it. In 1712, the southeastern natives got together into a confederation and pushed all the white people into the city of Charleston who were in what is called South Carolina, parts of North Carolina. And they weren't even in Florida during this time, really, that deep. They all encamped around Charleston. And if it wasn't for certain tribes come into their protection, they would have been in the Atlantic Ocean. All right, I'll start here. Now, some of you have studied uh, some of Steve Coakley's lectures, they're probably here, and you learned about uh, the fraternities and the sororities and colleges. The fraternities and sororities and colleges, the primary purpose of them is to draw away the intelligent people in our community to put them into and make sure that they never have any uh, stance towards uh, what we call a white supremacy. They are made and fashioned to only want to integrate with the ideals and vision of the slave master. They don't call it that, but they call it, you know, being American and, you know, whatever. And Dr. Coakley, I'm going to call him doctor. Steve Copley gave us the science of the boule. Now the boule, Sigma Pi Phi, were the head fraternity of all of these fraternities, four female and four male. But the reason why they set up this like this is this is magic. When you structure something in creation and you design it after something uh, that's based on cosmological principles, it makes it strong. It's powerful. That's why when you have a family and it's man and male and female, it's following cosmic law. It's powerful. It can produce. So, you have all kinds of people in these groups. All right? 
You see Oprah. That's Patrick Swigert of Howard University who didn't want Steve Coakley coming to Howard to do any more lectures. These people are in influential places. That's what I'm saying. Right? And they grew up as children. They didn't know anything about anything. They grew up into a system and they want, they, they, they're they naturally powerful. Right? They want to be successful. Right? And then the road to success is paid for them. So instead of producing someone who will work for us, because we don't have that big, that lane open, they go work for the enemy. So we gotta figure out how to open some lanes to get the investment of human energy back over here. That's the main point that I'm trying to bring up. So all of these people that you see in this intelligence work that was done, um, was done to curb out people in a certain way. Now, we are dealing with social scientists who have enough time because they got enough investment, tax dollars, and other things to sit in rooms and play how to destroy and control people. Now, if you don't have a counter, you're automatically defeated. I'm going to say that again. If you don't have a counter, you are automatically defeated. So the question goes back to your corpuses. Who is sitting in a room for you planning the social integrity and fulfillment of progress for your people. Ain't that many. Ain't that many. Who sits down and plans forward 20 years for you and your particular vision that does not with the matrix? That's a good question. And if you don't have it, how do you develop it and protect it? I'm not gonna sit here and call the white man a devil a thousand times to make you feel good. Cause you're gonna get tired of hearing that. That's right. You gotta do something. So, why am I pointing out this African American Institute? Do you know who was a part of this group? Did you know? Did you know that John Henry Clark was in this organization? Now, I got the papers to show that he was in the organization. Now, I'm not saying that John Henry Clark worked for the CIA. I'm not going to make that statement. But I am going to say he was around at this time. Now, he's passed on. Dr. Bing was in this organization. Listen, don't, I don't, don't do that. I'm not telling you that for that. I'm telling you that these people are brilliant and they have taught us things, but they were missing a lot of things too. You see what I'm saying? And they came through a certain rhythm. All right? Um, what's the brother who uh, teaches at uh, City College now? Jeffries. Jeffries was in this organization. He's still alive now. I did a radio show where I said that I haven't been able to get in contact with him. I, I, I got a way to, but I, I haven't been able to. I won't even say he's avoiding it. I haven't been able to. I want to ask him about what he knows about the foundation of this organization. The African American Institute, let's see if I got this slide. Uh, du Bois was a part of it. The African American Institute, the trustee and funder of the African American Institute was the CIA and Al Gray Corn was the head. Arthur Krim was also a funder. Who is Arthur Krim? Now, what I'm trying to show you is people who have and have built their husbandry up and what they do with it to keep you in a certain pocket. Arthur Krim, Krim got a law degree from Columbia University, was an advisor to Presidents Kennedy, Kennedy Johnson, and Carter in the fields of civil rights, health, higher education, arms control in Africa and Middle East relations. So when you look at a president, right, and you look at senators, they actually have advisors. Right. And you can go online to their websites and see how much they pay the advisors. The advisors are not congressmen or whatever. They get paid to deal with the science of world politics and give advice on what direction they should go in. Like the Rand Corporation. See, you don't know what that is, do you? You need to know what the Rand Corporation is because they give advice to politics to tell them, okay, this is what's going on in the Middle East. We got our people over here, over here, over here. We all, this is the intelligence, and we're going to give this to the NSA. And the NSA can share it with the president. And the president can sit down with our advisors because we are advisors to the king. 
Kings lose crowns, right? Why do kings lose crowns? Because kings always had advisors. And the advisors were the ones who ran the kingdom, not the king. All right? But they represent families. They're not going to run for Congress. They don't need to. Because they advise Congress. You see what I'm saying? So when you look at somebody like this, he was a board member of the Wiseman Institute of Science, the African American Institute, which we mentioned, chairman of United Artists, Orion Pictures. Um, he made a, a deal with Orion and Columbia for $175 million. Um, wealthy. Another man, John Kludge. This was Arthur Krim's friend. These are all people who were investing in the uh, School of International Affairs and the African American Institute to propel African studies. These are the people who pay for it. You see what I'm saying? These are the people who influenced the curriculum at Lincoln University. All right? This is why I'm mentioning these people. He got his degree in economics from Columbia University. All these people go to Columbia University for a reason. Look at, look at what he did. Check this out. This is husbandry now. He donated $510 million. That's a donation for him. You know how we ask you for a donation? Give me $10. Right? Give me $10 for coming up with Black and Nobel to keep the bit. He said, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a donation here. Here, here. Check for $510 million. That's my donation. Where did he get all his money from? Negroes. What's his family lineage? Mm. To the point where he could have 510. Now you know his children, children, children got that money. Because he's donating to his what? His university. And he's alumni on. He's on the board of directors. It's his corpus. They have a value system. It's implement what we want. Check it out. He's the founder and outgoing chair of Columbia's International Advisory Council. This is his quote. I think it's very important to have imagination and very important to dream, but also think it is important to keep ideas to yourself until you are implementing them. Hmm. Okay, that's, 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 that's wise. That's wise. 